I believe that we are living in a time when there's a great paradox. A paradox because the state of Israel and its continuing Middle East conflict with the Muslim people continues to dominate world affairs. It dominates most of the UN debate. It dominates a great deal of the media. And I believe it all is because the media has swallowed a myth, a monstrous lie that has come to be accepted as truth. Probably the most important part of this lie is the myth. Jews stole Palestinian cities, land, and houses. This is a falsehood taught to Palestinians and many Arab children from infancy. This is an excerpt from one of the Arabic 12th grade textbooks. Palestine's 1948 war ended with a catastrophe, or Nakba as they call it, that is unprecedented in history when the Zionist gang stole Palestine and expelled its people from their cities, their villages, their lands, and their houses, and established the state of Israel. These claims are false. Here are the facts. There was no Arab state our nation called Palestine in the Middle East in 1948 or ever. That means there was no Palestinian nation that the Jews could steal or occupy. Let's look at some of history. The Ottoman Turks ruled the entire area from 1517 to 1917. During that time there were no nations or independent states within the empire, just provinces. The locations of the future states of Israel, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and Iraq, and others were created by the European powers at the end of the First World War out of the ruins of the Turkish Empire. A homeland for Israel was one of the first created by the League of Nations. The fact is the Jews have lived continuously in Palestine for 3,700 years. Since the 19th century, the Jews were a majority of the population in Jerusalem. Therefore, since Israel's claim is older than any other, and its people have inhabited the land longer than any others, Israel has as much right to exist in the Middle East as do any of these Arab states. Jews are the most persecuted people on earth. They were victims of the ruthless Russian pogroms and in other Eastern European persecutions. The Nazis attempted to eliminate the entire Jewish race. More than six million men, women, and children were murdered in cold blood. Haj Amin al-Husseini, the leader of what we now know as the Palestinians, was in full cooperation with Adolf Hitler in his final solution plan for the Jewish people. They almost succeeded. You know, it's uh, interesting that uh, in this great attempt, many of those Jews could have been saved if other nations in the West would have accepted them to immigrate. At the San Remo Conference in 1922, the League of Nations gave Britain the mandate to create a home for the Jews. A substantial portion of the land encompassing modern Jordan and Israel at the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea was designated as the Palestine Mandate. It was to be a final secure homeland for the Jewish people. But the Arabs benefited most from the Mandate, it turns out. In 1922, as British Colonial Secretary, Winston Churchill gave Transjordan to the Hashemites. Now let me explain this for a minute. The Hashemites were the guardians and custodians of the holy places, Mecca and Medina, for many centuries. They helped somewhat in the war effort uh, in World War I. And so when they appealed to uh, Winston Churchill's uh, department that they should be rewarded as uh, helpers by giving a home, he then appealed to give Transjordan to them. The Hashemites, whom we know now as the Jordanians, were driven from their position as the guardians of the holy sites by the Saudis. Jewish leader Chaim Weizmann 
agreed to give 80% of the Jews' Palestine mandate land to the Hashemites. This was in exchange where the Jews received a written agreement that Transjordan would be made a home for those displaced Arabs that lived in Palestine mandate territory. The agreement was signed by Emir Faisal, representing the Arab kingdom of the Hejaz, or the holy sites around the great territory of Mecca and Medina. In this document, Emir Faisal promised there would be no more demands upon the Jews by the Arabs if they were given this land. Today, the kingdom of Jordan, which is at least 83% Palestinian, is supposed to be the Palestinian state. But it is not acceptable. The Hashemites took over the Transjordan and rule it. Why? Because there was never a national entity of people known as Palestinians. In response to continuous Arab threats and terror, in 1947, the United Nations divided the remaining 20% of the original mandate into what is called today the Gaza Strip and the West Bank for the Muslims. It allowed the Jews to keep an indefensible sliver of land as their home. 60% of the land that was allotted to the Jews was an wasteland. But they went to work and made the desert bloom. What did the Muslims do with the West Bank and Gaza? They were given billions of dollars from the United States, the United Nations, and Europe and their Jewish neighbors. And this was for economic development. But virtually all of it was taken by the PLO and other terrorist organizations that used the money for weapons and terror attacks. The rest went to Swiss bank accounts of the corrupt Palestinian leadership. No infrastructure for a state has ever been built.